Cassandra here at the Vintage Arcade Gal, and we're gonna do something a little more technical this time around. We're gonna talk about laminate and laminate installation. Now, just a word of warning, if you do this on your own, if you're using power tools, if you screw up your game, if you lose four of your fingers, if your cat leaves you, not our responsibility, not our fault. Only do this if you're actually comfortable using things like power tools and blades and chainsaws and whatever. So, a lot of arcade games had laminate on them just by default from the factory. And especially games like Donkey Kong where it was brightly colored laminate or even uh, games like, you know, some Atari games had laminate as well, like even wood grain laminate. Now this particular project we're working on right now did not originally have laminate. This is a cabinet uh, that was originally a game called Red Alert. It's a terrible game. This game's been converted like 80 different times and rebuilt. So don't be upset. Don't write me angry letters that I'm not making it like it was. I know that, whatever, but we wanted to put laminate on it because it would look terrible and it was a good shot. I've never done this before and as you can see it turned out really well. Um, on the other side is what we're going to do now is put laminate on this side and hopefully also on the front. And you can see what I've done is I've sanded it and then put some primer on there too just to give it a little more tooth to have something to stick to. Um, primer may not be necessary, but I always like a little bit of primer, and this wood is particularly thirsty. Uh, you can also see the great thing about putting laminate on here is that this game's been heavily damaged in the past. Looks like somebody kicked it in, and somebody did some really nice repair work, though. But all that's going to get covered up by the laminate. It's going to look really great. Um, so um, let's see what happens, and let's put some laminate on this thing. We'll put you step by step through the process. Um, make sure you're using a very well ventilated area like we're in our garage with both garage doors open. Um, use a respirator and you're definitely going to use some eye protection later on and wear gloves so you don't get stuff on your hands. Okay, let's, let's give it a shot. Okay, some basic supplies you're going to need to pull this off. You're going to need some gloves to put on your hands so you don't get sticky crap all over your hands for the rest of your life. It's a flush trim router bit for your router to uh, kind of trim the laminate as we go. Uh, of course, you're gonna need this contact adhesive um, that the laminate people will sell you. Um, you're gonna want a roller and kind of this um, heavily textured for the glue, and we'll go over that in a second. And this little special, this is what they call like a little, um, they call it a J-roller, but notice it's just a hard rubber piece. Um, to help adhere the adhesive together, and we'll show you that in a minute. You're also going to need a bunch of long dowels um, in order to pull this off successfully. And of course, you're also going to need laminate, which you can buy from a lot of different sources. I bought mine just from an industrial place online, and it was pretty inexpensive. Now, you can usually buy laminate in different sizes, and the sheets I bought were rather large, so we had to trim them down slightly, although you want it to be larger than the area you're laminating. Um, I needed to use some of this extra stuff for the front, so um, normally you would do this with a table saw. We don't have a table saw. We need to buy one desperately. Um, what we did, and we scored it with a, an X-Acto knife and broke it apart with a big long steel ruler. It's not the most effective way to do this, but it did work with a little bit of patience. Um, you just had to be real careful with this stuff because you see right there how I broke it. Um, it can crack very easily. All right, so we're ready to put the laminate down. Um, you see uh, my wife there is brushing off any sort of stuff that might be on the back of the laminate. In the game, I like to use these big industrial blankets that moving companies use. These are just great to have around, by the way, if you work on arcade games. That way, things don't get dirty um, and the laminate won't possibly get scratched while you're doing this. Now, again, you want to be in a really well ventilated area because you are dealing with some pretty toxic glue. There we have our glue, we have our roller, and um, we have our gloves. Um, that you're definitely going to want to wear. Now, one of the things we discovered doing this is a real easy way to distribute this glove instead of ruining a pan is get yourself some of these. Now, these are just solo cups that we cut to make little scoopers. Now, the glue is going to melt these clubs, so you have to be kind of fast when you're utilizing them, um, but this makes it a lot easier. 
then pouring it out in some sort of trough or some sort of paint distribution thing. Um, and you can just throw them away since obviously solo cups are pretty cheap. So there we go. There's our solo cups and we're putting our gloves on, which you definitely should always do. All right, now the fun begins. We're actually going to put the adhesive on both the cabinet side and the laminate side. You have to put it on both in order for this to work. If you just put it on one, it won't stick. And again, use this stuff in a very well ventilated area. This is a toxic substance. It is not to be played around with. So use a respirator as well. Um, safety first always. Okay, so we use our little scoopers. And this stuff is kind of like the consistency of honey. And then you use your roller um, and you want to get it everywhere. You definitely want to get it on the edges. But don't use too much because you don't want it to droop down and, and spill everywhere on the game. You can see there I'm really trying to work the edges. So, you know, in the middle and then work your way out. Um, when you're using the laminate, try to get on the blanket. Laminate's kind of curly too, so sometimes you want to try to hold on to the edges of the laminate while you're doing this. Try not to do that because then you'll get laminate on the other side accidentally. And there you go, there's our first step. So give that first coat about 15 minutes or so to dry. It just depends upon where you are and your ventilation situation. You'll be able to tell though it's starting to get kind of tacky. And then you're going to put on a second coat. And same thing here. You probably won't need quite as much, um, but you know, it just depends upon your work surface. The laminate side doesn't seem to need as much as the cabinet side. And I don't know if that is just because the wood of this cabinet was particularly thirsty. But same thing, you're going to consistently roll it. Just be careful and make sure you get those edges nice and saturated um, without going too crazy. You don't really need a lot of this stuff, but um, you'll be able to tell as you go through it how much you'll need. Okay, so we have our permeated or our totally glued down with two coats, laminate and cabinet side. So it's time to put these two together. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna get out your dowels and you're gonna spread these dowels out. And by the way, you really need to have two people to do this. Um, don't try to do this yourself. I just can't imagine this working with just one person. So. Um, Put your dowels out, space them out, oh, probably about eight inches across from each other. And don't worry, the dowels will not stick to the glue. Um, but the reason we do this is so when we put the laminate on top of the dowels, it gives us the ability to move it around. And again, this is the importance of having the laminate larger than the actual place you're putting on, because you'll see in a minute why we do that. But this gives us a lot of leeway and then we can kind of sit there and adjust it as you can see we're trying to figure out exactly make sure everything's nice and covered up um, the dowels are easily moved at this point um, you know I think it got a little sticky on the bottom there um, so we just kind of pop it off there see it's real easy to adjust at this point or if you just slap it down you're kind of screwed um, because that never works anyone who's ever had to put a sticker on anything knows that best intentions there. I have my, my J roller, my big hard foam roller, which is going to be really important in this process. Okay, so now what we do, we have it all lined up. We have enough space on each side, so we have a nice bit for the router to get. We take out the center dowel, and I just kind of push it down my hand, and I'm going to take the roller, and we're going to just adhere it at this point, and we're getting nice and flush with that rubber roller. Um, what a great tool this is. This is also a great tool to have when doing side art and I'll, I'll go through that at the end of this video as well. And then you just piece by piece take out each roller from the middle working outwards. That way you don't get any air bubbles. Everything is nice and flat. Um, just keep on rolling while one person takes out the dowels um, and it will just go on. You'll be amazed how great this is and how smoothly this works. It's um, just patience, timing, and planning like anything. And again, we're gonna speed this part up a little bit. You can see we take off the remaining dowels. And you wanna make sure you get those edges really good too, um, because if it's gonna peel anywhere, it's gonna peel on the edges. But you know, you can see that I'm getting right on the edge there. Um, you can even see some of this almost shape of the cabinet underneath the land at this point, how that stuff is folding. But it's super flat, it's stuck. Um, you know, just make sure you wait about 15, 20 minutes after the second coat to do this 
And it's pretty much on there. I mean, it's you're ready to go at this point. And you can pretty much start trimming it soon after you put these uh, two things together and you're satisfied with how they're lying. Um, if you're not, then you're out of luck because that stuff is stuck. Um, using your flush trim router bit with a router, um, you're going to slowly start trimming to the edge of the cabinet. And this stuff is pretty forgiving when you do this. Um, you see we're using like a little 2x4 as a guide. Um, which uh, we do mainly, although I think it's very helpful to do this regardless, um, the reason we're doing it is we have kind of an inexpensive router and it, it didn't get as low as we would like to to get the laminate. Um, but with the flush trim router bit, which is pretty inexpensive, it's like a $30 bit. This is like a $40 router, so not a lot of money here, but it worked great. Um, you do have to be careful though because the edge will be very sharp even when it's cut and we're going to take care of that in just a moment. This requires a little bit of patience. I usually always get my wife to do these parts just because I am uh, not as patient as she is and she's pretty good with these solids. You can see we have a clamp down there um, and you can see that laminate is coming off and it's pretty sharp like I said when it comes off so be careful. The edge will be pretty good um, but you may run into some rough spots. Um, so just be careful, we'll clean that up in a second. Now obviously the straight edges on the back and the front are a little bit easier to maintain. Uh, when you start getting into the more exotic curvy inside bits of the game, depending upon your game, that's when you're really going to have to do some planning and just take your time. Um, you can see she's making little circular cuts to kind of give her some, some leeway there to um, kind of get a little bit more of a a, a pop in there to make sure she has space and there's a little bit there that was kind of a pain in the neck and again it's just, you just got to be patient with yourself and take your time and uh, not rush and I'm always a big believer hey if you feel like you're rushing take a break have coffee go get some donuts or something and come back to it tomorrow nothing is ever erased with these projects because you know you're going to keep this game for a long time you can really see there it's just about done on that side and it looks fantastic nothing looks as good as laminate it is just so bright and shiny and glossy so the sides are done and they're looking good and they're trimmed down to the proper size with the router now the bigger challenge is yet to come because we want to do the front as well and then uh, you can kind of see there there's a little bit of a lip uh, between the sides and the center, uh, which means the fit has to be pretty darn close. We're not going to be able to trim the left and right hand sides, only the top, and then we'll have to cut the middle out for the coin door. Uh, now, in a perfect world, what would happen is we build the cabinet ourselves and we would just put these laminate pieces on and then assemble the cabinet. Unfortunately, you don't always have that luxury when you are restoring a cabinet. So, what we're doing here is we cut out a piece of laminate and then we measured it and trimmed it to size making it a little bigger left to right and then we continually went back and measured it and then would take off another sixteenth of an inch and whittle it down to size um, this is a pretty common technique with woodworkers when you're not quite sure you just keep on taking a little bit more off and off and eventually you find the right fit once we were happy with the fit, uh, and again, we go back to gluing again. So um, same process. You have to be a little more careful in a confined area, obviously. Um, in a perfect world, I would have had a smaller roller to do this section. Uh, you just want to make sure you don't drip glue everywhere, um, especially in that area around the coin door. In fact, if you really want to, I put a little tape there just because I didn't want to get those wings all gluey. Um, I was concerned that the blue tape might bleed um, once it hit the glue, but I think I was fast enough taking it on and off or it didn't really matter. So here we go, putting our glue back on, or our laminate adhesive I should say, and spreading it as thoroughly, getting those corners as close as I can. And same thing that we did before. Okay, so about 10-15 minutes uh, from the first coat. And then you put the second coat on, wait about 15, 20 minutes until it's tacky, and then you're ready to put it on there. I have my dowels. Uh, this is a little bit difficult, and we, we really didn't know quite how to do this because we wanted the edges to be perfect, and we were afraid 
if we went from the center out, we would run to alignment issues. So we did the inside edge first and we got it there and it actually worked out really well. Um, uh, we had one little corner, boink, right there. You can kind of see me trying to get it in there. Um, that didn't quite go in as well as we wanted to, um, but um, we were able to kind of pop it in there. It cracked a tiny bit on the very bottom. I don't think anyone will ever see it, um, but you know, what can you do? I think that the lesson here I can pass on is um, it's better to be a tiny bit smaller than try to be directly on there. So now we have our router, and uh, because of the lip, sometimes you it just created a little bit more of a challenge use the router you know, the, the bottom is not so bad but here we had to kind of build it up a little bit you know um, this this was just kind of a pain in the neck and again if you've got a weird cabinet you can see why this is going to become problematic and I guess in a perfect world again maybe you could disassemble the cabinet if it wasn't too much of a pain in the neck um, that might create its own problems just depending upon the cabinet um, and a lot of cabinets are flush on the front so maybe you won't run into this as much as we did uh, and this cabinet's been even modified a little bit and when I do the full size video of this game and everything we're doing with this game you'll kind of see why we had to modify it a little bit from what it was when we're using a clamp um, we actually cut a piece of wood here the right exact size to route it, and there we go. We finally got it to route, but on um, the corners uh, proved to be a little bit more of a challenge. These little pieces on the top that we just couldn't quite get to um, very easily. You can see the router's going to bend it more than it will cut it. We ended up just scoring these and breaking them off um, by hand, which is a little primitive but effective. And we would go back and clean it up with the sander in a little bit. You can see here, doink just wouldn't go. Um, kind of a challenging area there for the router. This coin door section we were kind of worried about, but what we did was just kind of cut open a section dead in the middle with a X-Acto knife and then just kind of found the maximum height with the router and the maximum width and just kind of went around in a circle um, with our wood planks as guides and it worked out really well. You can see our clamp there, and again, just steady and slow, and um, she's making little inlet holes to kind of find a way around it. Um, here's the front. Um, I guess most routers have lights on them now, too, which is super helpful. Uh, somebody who thought of that was pretty darn clever. And here we are making the, the final cut on the top of the coin door. Um, a little bit better view of the router. And again, you know, hey, be smart, wear a respirator, um, wear face shields, wear ear protection, you know, don't don't hurt yourself doing this, you know, and I think it helps too to have, again, two people working on it together, you kind of check yourself, and um, you have a buddy there to kind of help you out solving problems as you go. Here you go, from the miracle of our new steady cam. We're going to make the final cut for the coin door, and this is always very, uh, very happy moment here when you do something complicated like this, and it all finishes. Very satisfying. You hear that ka-chunk, and there you go. There's the coin door, and you can kind of see the jagged edges there. So again, this stuff is pretty sharp, so be careful even once it's cut. So the next thing you have to do is get rid of those rough edges, and they are very sharp. Um, and we have to do this, otherwise if someone touches your game, they're probably gonna get like a nasty paper cut. And so what I have here is a little detail sander I love using. I'm using like 150 grain sandpaper. I guess you can go finer. Um, this seemed to be working out pretty well though for me. And I like this little detail sander for these kind of jobs. You could probably use a sanding block or a file if you wanted to, but this worked great. I feel like I have a lot of control with this little little tool. Um, if you don't have one of these, you should get one. It's uh, super handy. Um, they're not that expensive. They're like 50 bucks or so. Um, I think they get you with the little sandpaper refills. It's kind of like inkjet cartridges to a printer. But anyway, um, see I'm just kind of getting those, especially those corners and areas, right at a 45 degree angle. And that way you can actually touch it and not kill yourself. 
At this point too, I'll just kind of tell you, if you happen to get any glue um, on the laminate itself, don't panic. What you can do is take a little acetone and a, a rag and kind of using swirly motions, it will come right off. Don't use like a green scrubby pad or anything like that. You will scratch the laminate. Uh, we made that mistake. Don't make the mistake that we made. Uh, just use some acetone, well ventilated area, of course, when you're using that stuff and take your time. Um, I also like to keep this stuff clean, so I use a lot of Windex for smudges and that seemed to get it off. Uh, laminate is pretty stern, strong stuff, so uh, you can usually do okay. Just don't use anything abrasive. Now, as a bonus here, we decided to go ahead and put the side art on just because we were so excited about the game. And you can use your roller here too. And just a word of advice when you put side art on like this, it's not full coverage side art. Um, go ahead and, and take a level reading with a level of your game and make sure the game is perfectly level. And then make sure your side art is level. And then I like to mark it with a pencil where I'm gonna put it. You can use some blue tape to line it up before you start peeling it. And you can say, hey, I used my little hard film roller again to slowly peel this off. Again, this should be a two-person process. You'll be better off if you use two people. And um, you can get a nice air bubble-free thing there. Uh, if you do get an air bubble, don't panic. Uh, you can always poke it with a pen and use a little bit of a heat gun, but not too much with the heat gun or you can burn or scorch the artwork itself. And this is always very uh, satisfying here as we take off the protective covering on the art. And here you can kind of see my reasoning. Of course, now you realize, if you haven't already, this is a Mikey game, um, a very punishing game to play if you've ever played it. But interesting, and we'll go into that, the reason why it's interesting in a future video. But you can see the white laminate against the white art where it kind of goes off. It just looks great. It, it really, really pops um, with that laminate, much more so than any paint you could ever put on there. You could paint and sand for the rest of your life and not get that luminous nature that you will get with laminate. All right, so from my sketchbook to the actual real game there, and I'm a pretty big planner, as you can see with these projects, and we have our tea molding on there, which is what they call Disc of Tron Blue. It's kind of a light blue. It looks dark in the picture, but it's actually lighter. So pretty happy with what we're at at this point. Um, not really gonna go too much more into what we're doing with this game. I'm gonna save that for the next video, but you can see it's up and running, it's working, it's playing Mikey. Um, pretty excited about this one. Uh, I never used laminate before, so if I can do it, you can definitely do it. Again, take your time. Uh, remember your drying times. Remember your two coats. Well ventilated area. Use your dowels and definitely use a buddy and use safety equipment and you're gonna just do great. That's all I've got for you. So laminate, you know, it looks great. Um, it takes some time and some planning, but you can do it. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, doing it again, maybe making a cabinet from fresh next time, which I've never done before either. You know, you gain these skill sets and then you gain confidence. And you also need to remember not to put your camera on a suction cup mount above the garage door because it will fall. And anyway, that's it. For me, this is all I've got. So uh, happy hunting and happy collecting. Bonk. <laughs>